The Blancpain GT Series kicks off this weekend. We're at Monza in Italy for the first Endurance Cup race of the year. It's another fantastic entry. It's dripping with star names and all the top brands that you've come to associate with GT3, including Honda joining the series for the first time this year. It's going to be action all the way. The same was true throughout 2018. The championship kicked off here at Monza, and for many, they found themselves facing in the wrong direction. All through the race, there was drama as the WRT Audi worked its way into contention to battle with HTP Motorsport for the race win. From Monza to Silverstone, and on the British circuit, it was a British brand that reigned supreme. Silverstone belonged to Aston Martin. Others had their travails along the way, with damaged bodywork or contact causing spins. The new R Motorsport squad came out on top and Paul Ricard could have had another British brand at the top as well. The Bentleys had looked strong race long. Others found themselves in the wars like WRT with a gearbox problem putting the car out of the race. But then as night fell the leading Bentley started to struggle and it was the Emil Frey Racing Lexus that beat it on the last lap. High drama as ever over 24 hours at Spa-Francorchamps. Another mighty entry. An early drama for the Grasso Racing Team Lamborghini. Ferraris with punctures and as pit stops cycle through as day turned to night and back to day, the order continued to shuffle. Bentley again was in the mix, but then late dramas and safety cars started to change the order once again. And amazingly, it was the Vulcan Horse Motorsport BMW team that came out on top. Mercedes, though, was looking strong in Spain for the final endurance round of the season. There were nervous faces in the pit lane as the championship played out. It was the Black Falcon Mercedes, though, that would come through to score victory as others fell by the wayside. And for Black Falcon, it was a race win and a title win at the end of the season. Twelve months ago, it was an Audi that won here at Monza. And oddly, the cars hadn't looked that quick across the weekend, but suddenly came into their own in the last hour. And that was when they started to shake up the order. WRT is back as one of the fancy teams, and the number two Audi is led by Dries Van Thor. Last year went quite well, but you know it's always different. Uh, we have a new we, we we arrived here with a new Evo car, so we'll be excited to see how it goes in the first endurance race in Blanfa. Um But yeah, it's always difficult to say. Today went well, but everybody is uh, it went well. Everybody's holding back or going flat out. I don't know. You know, it's a really competitive field. Every year it gets more, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So it will be a hard season, I guess, with a lot of hard drivers and big competitors. But you know, we'll try our best and see how it goes. It's all changed at RJN. Bob Neville's team, for so long associated with Nissan's, is now running Hondas in conjunction with Jensen Button's team. One car here this weekend. It's the first time out for the car in the Block GT Series. And amongst the drivers, looking forward to his first outing here at Monza in a GT3 car, American Matt McMurray. I'm really excited to be here. As, uh, everything's new, which makes it challenging. It's a new team, new car, new series. Things that I've been to this track, so that's not new. Um, but it's, uh, so far it's been great. Uh, the field's super competitive. The focus has to be really high, even more so for me because it's a new car. Uh, so a, a lot of learning that has to be done really in a really short time span. Uh, but uh, I look forward to it. Your go-to driver for a Mercedes is Raffaele Marchiello these days. Quick in endurance races, champion in sprint. There's not much he didn't win in 2018. He's back looking for more success this year. He's joined by Michael Meadows and by Bentley convert Vincent Avril. We have like so many good drivers in this championship, so for sure like we need to be like, every time on, on the limit, on the edge, every time really focus and and then you need a good result every race to win the championship. But for sure to defend the championship means everything but means also nothing. I mean it's it's a race like the other one. I just need to do my job and then we'll see. Yeah, I mean our car it's it's one of the best cars for sure. Entire degradation is really good. We have a lot of margin on on a lot of performance, so if the other they go quick, we can go also quicker and we are not scared of them, of the new kids and new car, we know our potential, so we're looking forward to the battle and yeah, we are ready. A Porsche won the very first Block Pan Endurance Series race, as it was then known here at Monza all those years ago. And since then, Porsche has come and gone from the championship, but this year, Rover Racing has a two-car assault 
and hasn't switched from BMW just for fun. They're here to win, so too is lead driver Dirk Banner. I'm really looking forward to start this new season again, uh, with the new Porsche especially, because uh, the car promised to be really quick. Uh, we had a couple of races now already with this car, uh, including uh, the California 8 hours, and uh, we were fighting for the win there, so uh, gave us high hopes now for the start of the long Pan season. Uh, our new car in general uh, has better performance than the old one, that's already good. Um, it's, um, it has more downforce, um, it's, it's easier for the mechanics to work on the car, to, to make the setup, which will be important in the short practice sessions we have. And uh, I mean, on track, the car is uh, very good on braking, uh, has good mechanical grip. So uh, for these races where you have to drive one hour with, with your tires and you have to manage the tires a bit, uh, it seems that the, the car is really good on the tire management and tire degradation uh, is a key to be, to be good in the end of the race. And, and be able to fight for the win. So for, for me, last year was a cool experience to get to know this championship, to get to know, uh, you know, all the other drivers, the, these uh, cool tracks we go to. So uh, for me, it's a, it's a very cool championship, and uh, I'm excited to, to start. Over at Bentley, there's been a bit of shuffling of drivers, and also a bit of shuffling of numbers. The cars for so long seven and eight are now 107 and 108. The hundred prefix because this is Bentley's centenary year. This, the new car that we saw debuted at Monza last season within the Blancpain GT Series, it didn't have a great 2018. 2019, hopefully, it will be better. And Jules Gounon is looking to open his account with a win. So this year, basically, our target is to, to win. Uh, we came back for that. We think we are capable of doing it. Now it's something that we need to, to be focused on, uh, to work hard. We had a really strong winter with all the team. We did a lot of team building in the in the factory and also at uh, Cocker Mouth in M Sport to try to, to make the re relationship even stronger. So we really feel as a, a family, a team now, and um, I think we are well prepared for, for Monza. We haven't drove in the wet yet in a race, so this is a bit new for us, but uh, I'm pretty sure the engineer and uh, will find a setup that could work. The only thing is that it looks like it's uh, dry all weekend except Sunday, so everybody will go out on, on rain and just figure it out. So this is going to be nice. There's going to be a fascinating inter Nissan contest over at Lamborghini this year. Grasser Racing Team has been the dominant Lamborghini team for so long. But now the FFF Racing Team that won the Blancpain GT Series Asia title last year comes to Europe. The team has 2017 champion Andrea Calderelli not only as a driver, but as the team manager as well. Now FFF and Lamborghini, uh, we are collaborating since uh, more than three years. It's a very strong relationship. Our uh, team base now is just behind the factory. So it's a, it's, a very, it's a very simple collaboration. Most of the team is Italian. We are joining Europe with uh, good expectation, but at the same time, we know that we are coming from a different series, so we have to learn. So our first races, uh, we expect that all the team has to learn how to race in Europe and. Uh, uh, I think slowly how to win in Europe. So welcome to Monza, welcome to the rain, welcome to the first Endurance Cup race of the Blancpain GT Series. John Watson is down on the grid, David Addison just about in the dry. It's hardly a warm and sunny visit to Italy, though the uh, teams had to contend with uh, rain on Friday while they were testing. Dry qualifying, uh, sorry, dry pre-qualifying yesterday, but a wet qualifying this morning. But the Monza circuit will no doubt, as ever, give us some great racing. The grid, 46 cars strong, is lined up, ready to go. The lap, of course, divided into the three sectors with the familiar first chicane pitch point, the fast, iconic parabolica at the end of the lap. So there is the grid, and as I say, 46 cars we have. And starting on pole position is Mirko Bortolotti. He was, as ever, good in qualifying. And he is with John Watson. Mirko, it was meant to be sunny here this weekend. Yeah, welcome to Italy. Eh? They come to Italy, it's going to be nice, they said. But it's a little bit rainy, so we take it. At least the food is not wet. Say again? The food is not wet. No, no, no. The, the food is good. And uh, everything is good, but it's just, unfortunately, it's raining. But uh, let's see. Hopefully, we can have a proper race without too many safety cars or full coast yellows. It would be nice to have a, a clean, a clean race. So let's see. Maybe the weather helps a little bit. Let's see. Stunning qualifying. Looked absolutely on the limit. 
it was completely on the edge. Um, I had one lap at the end of the first segment and um, managed to really get everything out of it, um, taking quite a lot of risks. Worked out, um, happy. We have a really good starting position, the best starting position in Monza and obviously with, uh, with those conditions, uh, some, some clean air in front um, once the race will get underway. So let's see, let's try to make the maximum. Are you expecting the start to be a regular start, lights go out or going to be a safety car start? I think it's, from what I heard, um, it's going to be a safety car start. I think one or two laps and then probably they will go green, but we will see. Bring the car back safe, man. Thank you. So Marco Bortolotti starting on pole position for the Grasser Racing Team. And it's going to be Nico Bastian in the Mercedes that will go from alongside. So let's have a walk up the grid. Marco Bortolotti goes from pole position. It is Nico Bastian in the blue and white Mercedes alongside. On the second row of the grid, you get to the first of the Audis. And that will have Alex Riveras behind the wheel and Vincent Abril in the almost Scottish blue and white Mercedes lining up for fourth on the grid. Row three is where you get to the Silver Cup Barwell Motorsport Lamborghini started by the impressive James Pull, and it is Lamborghini champion and Blancpain GT Series Asia champion Dennis Lind in 563 to line up alongside. On the fourth row of the grid is the South African driver Kelvin van der Linde for Attempto Racing and Stein Schrothorst for Attempto in the next of the Audis on the outside of the grid. Row five is where you find Johnny Adam, a bit of a Monza hero of years past, for Garage 59 now with the Aston Martin and Stefano Gattuso's Ombra Racing uh, Lamborghini is alongside. On the sixth row of the grid, the next to the Astons, number 62, started by Mathieu Verzivier. That's the R Motorsport car. And then the first of the Bentleys, 108, Alex Buncombe is alongside. Why is it 108 this year and 107 in the other car? Bentley's centenary, so they've got this 100 prefix. Simon Gachet will start the number 25 Santa Lock Audi, and alongside him, Lucas Stoltz in the Black Falcon Mercedes. Go back a row, you get to the uh, next of the Lamborghinis, Giovanni Venturini for the FFF racing team, lining up alongside Dirk Werner in the Rover Racing Porsche. The next of the Rover cars comes next indeed. Matthew Geminet will start and alongside him is Ricardo Sanchez, given a lap back in fact after an appeal from the team after qualifying. Nicky Team starts on the 10th row of the grid, lining up alongside Philip Frommenweiler in the Jensen Team Rocket RJN Honda, run by Bob Neville's team. On row 11 of the grid you find the Omani driver Ahmad al Hafi and Lewis Williamson for Stracker Racing in the green and black Mercedes is alongside. Andrea Rizzoli for Dominic for Dynamic Motorsport, I should say, is 23rd on the grid, and Hubert Haupt's uh, Mercedes for Black Falcon is alongside. On the next row, a long way back, actually, with work to do here, Mikhail Alyoshin for SMP Racing in the Ferrari, and it is Jordan Pepper starting in Bentley at 107 alongside him. Then Kim Louis Schramm in the Phoenix Audi, and Michele Ferretta will start in the next of the FFF Racing Team at Lamborghinis. You get to Arno Santamato next. He's for Grasser with his Lamborghini. And alongside is Raymond Vos sharing with Tom Onslow Cole for Ram Racing. For Barwell on the 16th row, Adrian Amstutz will go first in the bright yellow Lamborghini you see there near the pit wall. And alongside him in the green colours, David Perel, the quick South African. Uh, for HB Racing in the gravel yesterday, but on track now. Let's wait for the grid girls to pass. And you'll see there Florian Schultz's car, uh, which is going to be started by Jens Liebhauser and it will be Pierre Yves Pack in the Audi alongside. Next row, Steve Paro in his Rinaldi Ferrari, the sister car started by Pierre Eret. On the 19th row of the grid, you get to Alexander West in the garage 59 Aston and for Tempesta Racing, Chris Buncombe will go first. The next row is where you will find the black and red Lexus. It's run by Tech One Racing, Simon Abadai's team and Fabian Bates will go first and alongside him is Jean-Luc Bobelic. Then you have Stefano Costatini in the Raton Racing by Target Lamborghini, missing from the grid. Derek Pierce in the team Parker Bentley that crashed in qualifying. I fear will be a non starter. Renault Coupons for Boots and Gignon will be next on the grid. Nick Homerson's repaired Ferrari damage this morning is alongside. And then at the back of the grid, there is Mark Rostow for Boots and Gignon in the BMW. And David Roda will uh, start in the Antonelli Motorsport Mercedes. So that's 45 cars that we have on the grid. Now, just to reiterate the point, it is a safety car start. That means, and you can tell it from the clock, the race is on. This is all counting, as I said before, uh, the uh, race started. It's, it's all counting into the three hours. So as soon as the safety car moved away, the race was on. And we go racing at Malta then. The first Endurance Cup race 
of the Blancpain GT Series is go officially, and it is Mirko Boltanotti that leads in the spray down towards the first corner. Nico Bastia instantly comes under attack from Alec Riveras as Bortolotti goes to the inside line to cover that off. Others on the outside, including Dennis Lind, they're looking for track position, but Dennis Lind almost running out of road. Everybody so far so good down towards turn one, but here comes the midfield, and here comes the pinch point. Yes, and it's going to be at this point where there's a lot of spray just hanging in the air. So the race leader is Mirko Bortolotti. It's Nico Bastian second, and it's Alex Riveras running in third place. No change off the grid. Fourth is Abriel, fifth though is Dennis Lind, and he goes off the road, there might have been contact there from James Paul behind him, but Dennis the Menace is in the gravel, he's kept the momentum, he's kept it off the wall, and Dennis Lind will get back on, but he's losing place after place. Yes, he did, and I think Benson Abril will be taking a seat, deep breath, so thank goodness that the Lamborghini has vanished, because he was really challenging Benson Abril in this opening lap of the race. Again, watch the 563, the Lamborghini, Dennis Lind looks to try and make a manoeuvre on the Black Falcon, he does, good pass round the outside, Dennis Lynn is absolutely on a mission. I mean, he is by far and away the most aggressive of all the driver car combinations that we've seen in these opening laps. And he's the first one that's made a meaningful overtake and make it stick. And now he's trying to do the same on the Archport. Aston Martin, that blocks any attempt. So Johnny Adam not going to give up that position particularly easily. But the Lamborghini clearly has got pace and got very good traction coming out of Lesbo too, up alongside the Aston Martin. Aston will have maybe the slight advantage coming up into the Ascari chicane. But Alex oh. Buncom sadly overruns coming into the first chicane and any position that he makes up he's going to have to wait. Let's see where the field comes. It certainly will let the cars that he shot past under braking get ahead of him, otherwise he will be penalised. Yeah, it was Johnny Adam, but he just tried to get past and he rejoined just alongside the Aston Martin. So we'll see who comes into shot first. Uh, side by side, in fact, they still are, aren't they? And so the Bentley goes ahead. Alex Buncombe gets it done now, going up to the Roger Chicane. So he was trying to get past Johnny Adam, he has now done so. And Dennis Lind is right there behind them, them and up the curve. I mean, Dennis Lind is driving as if this is all a dry racetrack. The car has got grip, it's got the ability to put its power down. He's able to shoot out of the corners with you know, the acceleration beyond any of those that we've seen around him. Yeah, that's there. Uh, we have, again, Dennis Lynn trying to sprint up the inside. Look at that. He's like he's got four-wheel drive. He just charges up on the inside line. Through he goes, levels with the Bentley, passes the Bentley, waves goodbye. And look at this. Johnny Adam, I think he's going to lose out this time because Gattuso gets up the inside. Stolt gets up the inside as well. And the Aston Martin loses two places and just is able to slot in ahead of Simon Gachet in the Audi. Now, more battles are going on, and that's Matthew Vazivier getting up past Johnny Adam, or trying to, round the outside. Two different teams, two Astons, and Johnny Adam is just ahead, but Vazivier is going to have the inside line for the next corner. Yes, he is. Gachet is right there on the back of Stoltz, and the gap is a fifth of a second. Uh, we saw Jens Liebhauser in the gravel. I understand he got there with a bit of an assist from David Eroder and that's being looked at by the officials. As there, Gachet comes up on the outside line. Is he going to go through? Is he going to try? Is he going to run out of road? Not quite, he's done it. So well, Gachet bravely goes through. Dennis yeah. Lind has been driving all over, around, underneath, whatever, this racetrack this afternoon. And again, he is illustrating just this car, the 563 Lamborghini, has got, whether you want to call it grip or whatever, <laughs> that nobody else seems to have. Now, coming down into Parabolica, that's not going to be such an easy pass on the 55 Audi, but the watch for the undercut, because he's managed to make the switch. Wow. Look at the different levels of grip. He's just driving around people. That's Nick Hobbison's Pro-Am Ferrari, and that's hit the wall, hasn't it? And there's another car off, just out of shot. You can see at the bottom yes, right, there's a yes. car. But he's been hit up the back, the rear wing of the Ferrari. Oh, that's Davide. Oh, it's the Mercedes now. We're going to have a little bit of an altercation. Here we go. Well, we're about to go full course yellow because there's all of a sudden a lot of tidying up to be done. And the full course yellow countdown. Now, is this going to tell... Oh, look at oh, it. Oh, I mean, oh, that's just been poor driving, poor driving. Hobbleson, understandably, and that's a lot of damage to the rear of the Ferrari. The, the Mercedes has already suffered front-end damage from the first of qualifying yeah. sessions this morning. This and is all Lottie is in the pit lane. The leader is in. Really? So half an hour done, and there's the leading car into the pit lane. Usual set of wet tyres. Or is it one tyre? Has one he got a tire. puncture? Has he got a left rear puncture? Looks Must like have it been is. the case that he's had a deflating tyre, so Murka Bortolotti has had to make an unexpected pit stop, and everybody will be going, wow, what happened? Bortolotti's going to be second, because he will rejoin there. Second.
and now everybody back in one long line. You can see far less spray in the air now. We're not yet at a dry road, but we're not far off, assuming no more rain comes. Still wet off line, you've still got to be careful, but it's better now than it's been the entire day, never mind the entire race. Much, much better. The thing that's going to inhibit people putting on a set of sticks is there is still a lot of moisture in the surface, but it's the ambient temperature and the track temperature is really, really low. That's going to be the factor that's going to... But look, the pace bastion's gone. Storms away, and look now, Rio Arras under attack from Vincent Avril in the Mercedes. Is he going to be able to get his nose in front? It's a long nose on that Mercedes as they come now down towards turn one. Second, then he's brought to Lassie, but for third, Rivaras on the inside line, hangs on to the place. Abriel has to slot in behind him. Fifth, then, it is Kelvin van der Linde, and sixth is Dennis Lind as they wriggle their way through that first chicane. And look at this traffic jam as up the escape road goes the number nine BMW of Mark Rostow. <laughs> look at Dennis Lind again, able to use all the bits of the racetrack, catch up alongside the 88 Mercedes, Phantom of Rill, powerless to do anything about the Lamborghini. Now, let us go to the Bentley pit. Dakota is with Maxime Soule and Andy Suchek. Well, this is one of the first weekends you guys have had on fully wet, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, we have barely run this car on the wet. Um, it's proven to be definitely much better than the first generation Bentley, and uh, we're very pleased. I mean, he's fighting his way up, uh, up to the top five. Uh, Oh, he got him around the outside, so that's good news. Uh, yeah, he's doing well, uh, he's lapping well, uh, doing no mistakes, he's already P7, I guess, and uh, yeah, I'm going to get into the car in um, 12 minutes. So Dennis Lind then now, stuck, fourth. Alex Rivera is no longer thinking of attacking, he's got to defend, but there's a gap on the inside. Can the Lamborghini go for it? Yes, he can. Dennis Lind gets almost up alongside, Rivera goes wide where there's the grip on the outside and he hangs onto the place. Dennis Lind, having worked his tyres hard, is still stuck in fourth, and we're going to go to a full course yellow now. Full course yellow now. Restart on short notice. Restart on short notice. Well, we haven't seen anything Four, on the circuit. Three, two, one. Green flag, green flag. Almost like you need to get a marshal across the road to get some debris out of the way. And something that we didn't see, and obviously it's nothing that was particularly serious, but. Has that the lead been over to him? He's done his second easily. Merkel bought a lot. Well, Lecco Bastion wasn't asleep, but certainly Merkel bought a lot. He was on his toes. Has taken the lead as they come up into the Ascari chicane. Now, slicks are there for Bentley. Yeah, well, it's going to be a very, very brave. I mean, Andy Suchek is going to get into the 108 Bentley. So maybe those are the tyres that are being laid out for the 107, which is down in 13th place, George Pepper. Well, that was what I was saying early on. So far, bad, why not roll the dice? I think Bentley may well be doing that. Yeah, I mean, that is the option. If you've got a two or a three-car team, you can do that kind of uh, a switch around with tyres. So the Bentley is in, that 107, is it on slicks? Looks like it's it. a brave, but George, it's a, it's a brave move, and whoever's going to go out and uh, be the first on the track on slicks down the pit road goes number 63. So Rolfi Nyken, we expect, will do this second stint. He might well therefore be given a set of slicks, and that's going to be a pretty arduous 55 minutes for him as he makes his way onto the circuit. We'll check when the driver ID switches and pit out. There's 108 as well, so uh, Andy Sujek we put into that car. We would have thought if 107 has gone slicks, they would have done the same thing. And it is Ezekiel Perez Compact that has taken over the number two uh, Audi, there it is, coming down towards turn one. So I'll give you the order at the end of the next lap now that we've had all of these pit uh, shuffles and we understand it's slick tyres on both of the Bentleys. Well, that's that's a, a, a gamble. I mean, one might say, go on one car, but think about the risks and you'd see the difficulty that there's... That's what happens when you put slicks on. I mean, Andy Suchek is simply a passenger coming through at the very, very low speed first chicane. So Rolf in Eichen it is then in the lead of the race for the moment. Now, Rolf and Eichen is not slow, but he's not as quick as Bortolotti or as Engelhardt, and he hasn't been racing for as many seasons. Uh, and he's not done that many seasons at this level, so let's see how he fares. Uh, the change has happened behind, look, because up into second place has gone Raffaele Marchiello. Interesting that he's gone second rather than Michael Meadows. Michael will do the last in, so 88's ahead of Compank already, so Marchiello could well be the race leader come the end of this hour. But having pitted early, 76 Aston Martin is now the leader of the race. So Jake Dennis has taken over from Matthew uh, Vesivier, uh, sorry, from uh, Marvin Kirchhoff in 76. 
and it's the Aston that currently leads. Now, he is well into the stint because, as I say, they pitted early, so Jake's been in the car for over 12 minutes now, but 76 leads off after that first round of pit stops, and Rolfi Nyken is about to lose another place. There, Nyken goes deep, and past him, finally, goes Kompak. Yeah, I mean, one car on wet, one car on dries. Rafa Nyken's going to be devoured by one of the two Porsches just coming up in two... There's more one. That's Sven Muller. Yeah, well, just, he gets alongside me again. You can see what's happening. One car's got wet weather grip, one car's got dry weather grip. As there, the other Aston's got a punctured tyre. That is the Sally Yolok, Charlie Eastwood, Ahmad Al Hafi car. Samuel well, Molina has just done a lap on a 1.59 as the up Lamborghini? the escape road goes the Lamborghini, but we've now got lap times being done at below two minutes. 1.59.855 for Miguel Molina, who is way down in 12th place. The Lamborghini skips back onto the road. Drama reverted. Yes, but not good for the 63 Lamborghini to have that little unforced error coming into the first chicane. It's going to be monstered by what, four or five oh. Contact, contact coming through the exit of Curva Grande, and that was on the back of the 63 Lamborghini, and all of a sudden, he can't stop the two cars go straight forward. Are they going to make it run the safety? Just I about. mean, was that followed by leader or what was going on there? Looked uh, like the, the uh, two cars just never really attempted to slow down or break at all. And more contact there, 55 bouncing off the other Audi, so... And the Aston tagging the back of the, yeah. uh, the Audi. Cars everywhere, through they go. Right, so Suchek gains out of all of that, so also does Stephen Palette uh, out of 55, though. The Attempto car losing places, that was a long way back anyway, it's on a different lap, isn't it? So that should never have been in the back of Peter Scott, was getting involved. There it was, the lead car. There's 108, so that is Andy Suchek about to lose a place because up the inside, Miguel Molina goes through, the Ferrari picks up a spot. That's eighth now. Suchek back on the power, and he goes to the outside line, he wants the place back. So the Bentley, look at that in the straight line, it's got the grunt, it's got the drive, got the traction, and Suchek gets back in the... Hunt here, he goes round the outside and he's back up into eighth place. Yeah, he had the extra speed coming off Parabolica. So the Ferrari was slightly inhibited on being the inside line. Closed up under brakes, looked all over the back of the Bentley, coming out of the first chicane now, and acceleration oh. simply on traction. And that's the difference between the two different tyres. Oh, problem for the 12 Lamborghini in the gravel. Roman Monti at the wheel of it, and Marciello has just done a 158 on slicks. New fastest lap of the race. Let's see how he got there. All of his own. He got on because he ran the right rear wheel over the kerb, under braking coming in. And once he did that, the back started to rotate. And once it had gone, it was going to be gone forever. Yeah, okay. So no, now no, he's, he's going to make his move because he closed under the yellow flag and he's going to just breeze on by. Yeah, gobbled up. Yeah. Side by side in Pro Am, Raymond Voss is about to lose his class lead because up the inside look goes Jim Clark in the Acca Mercedes and he goes ahead of the Ram Racing car and just gets it out of the corner. In ahead, but only just, because he also nearly rode the kerb there, so Jim Pla up into the lead of the class, Raymond Voss fights back, oh, and they turn to off into the barrier, goes Jim Pla, and that all of a sudden is the end of our pro-am battle, because they're both off the road, and they've both got big damage. And again, there's going to be a full course yellow, and it'll oh. be a safety car as well. Side by side coming down, everything is fine, clear, fair. Full course yellow now. Yeah. So under braking, the 87 has the advantage entering into the chicane. They almost make a bit of contact here. So a little tab, a little tack there. So all of a sudden, under acceleration. Well, I don't know what the 87 was doing wrong. The, the gap on the outside was closing. There was no way that if you've got a closing gap, you persist and keep trying to go around the long way. I think 87 was the innocent victim of that. With 69 minutes to go into the Parabolica. We'll be back racing any moment then. Can Marciello make good his escape? Sven Muller on his toes. Zayd Ashkenani in the traffic, so he might lose out as we go green. We're back racing. Ashkenani's challenge is going to come from Matt Campbell in the other rover. Uh, Porsche over the timing line, they now go, and Muller has to come up and try and get through the back markers. And that's going to be a problem. The Ferrari is quicker in the straight line than the Porsche. And all that Muller could try to do is take a, a pump down the outside coming into the Porsche Cane. He gets up alongside the Ferrari, concedes very sensibly and, and, and gentlemanly in the process, but getting a little bit more congested coming down, as Jake Dennis there, you see in the Aston Martin on that set of sticks, mm -hmm. and he tags the back, or the, the Audi gets tagged in the rear, as the other portion of the 99 seemed to struggle a little bit getting off 
Matt Campbell seemed to struggle a bit getting off the first chicane. For the lead, they're side by side. Raffaele Marchiello just fends off Sven Muller down towards the Valiente Roggia. But he's going to go deep into the corner and off he goes. Muller has the golden chance now to get the race lead. Back onto the circuit goes Marchiello. Wide over the kerb goes Muller. He's on the outside line, but he's got his nose in front into the Lesmo. Sven Muller leads at Monza. And I think that Marcello made an error, an error and he would have had to have conceded the lead if he had managed to come back on the track ahead of the Porsche. But the Porsche and it looks like Marcello's a problem. He has. He's suddenly lost position, not just simply coming into the chicane, but suddenly fallen. Has, has he that. picked up something uh, on the racetrack? I mean, there has been a load of carbon fiber just simply from that last incident coming out of the first chicane. Has he picked up a puncture? I agree he's got something, either a puncture or damage. Was that the result of going over the kerbs or was it the cause? But either way, he's lost a heap of time and you can see that he's not happy. The way that he was jinking the car around, it looks like he's got a vibration, like a, a, a tyre is going down potentially. But Marciello, I mean, envisaging he'll be in the pits this time. And Zayed Ashkenani is about to go second. So the green Porsche having its day of days. Look, he's eating up the real estate against Marciello. And that Mercedes surely is going to come into the pit lane this time because Raffaele Marciello has got a problem. He is powerless to stop Zayed Ashkenani from having a look up the inside. But now Marciello is on the wrong line if he wants to get into the pit lane. So yeah. can he keep going or is he going to switch across? He's got to switch across. He's got to make the undercut and try and get... No, he's, he's staying out. He's staying out. There's the 33 Ferrari at the exit of the Lesbo 2. Uh, again, is that going to be another situation where we've got a full course yellow? Well, what's going on for fourth place now? Calderelli is there ahead now of Stephen Palazzo. Andrea Calderelli is only eight seconds back from the race leader. Suddenly that car's back in the game. Yellow flags wave at the next corner because this is where you've got the Ferrari in the gravel bed being hoiked out of the way. But Raffaele Marchiello is losing chunks of time. And this car that has been dominating the second stint is now just a sucker for everybody that catches up to the tail of it. Look how wet the pit lane is yeah, in comparison right. to the racetrack. Yeah. It is saturated. Everybody needs to be very careful. Overshoot by the 99 Porsche. And that's again the consequence of being on a track that was relatively dry and now going on to a track that is, or a pit lane that is very, very wet. I still think they should have been in a lap ago, but anyway, Michael Meadows will take over from Raffaele Marchiello. So there is number 54, Porsche, which has just rejoined after its second pit stop. And is it still ahead of number 563, which has got Marco Papelli at the wheel? Porsche lead car in. Indeed so, so Sven Muller will hand over and for the moment give up the, give up the lead. And there, look, the two leading Porsches together all of a sudden. So now you've got Klaus Backler going through on the inside line, and that puts him ahead of Roman Duma. So a change for the lead of the race, effectively. Backler goes through. He's further into his stint, don't forget. So he's got everything up to temperature there. And that, for the race, is four, the Busan Junior three, BMW. Two, yeah, the right rear, one, the left rear. Full course yellow now. Yeah. As it goes on the gravel, the wheel did come off, indeed it did. So the wheel came off and the car continued all the way down to the end of the gravel trap, as did the wheel. So number 25, Stephen Pallette, comes into the pit lane. Christopher Hasser will take over this car. It was leading and now that we've got everybody else under a full course yellow, they're not going to lose very much time at all. Can they get back out ahead of the opposition? So 25 serves the stop and will keep the race lead as long as there's a green light at the end of the pit lane. Look, because he's miles ahead now of the green Porsche. That's played right into Santa Locke's hands, hasn't it? Let's see what happens as this race goes green. Here it is. So away storms Christopher Hasser, who's got to get his head down now. This is his first racing lap, don't forget, because proper racing lap, because all the others since he got in the car have been full course yellow or safety car laps. Now, what about Backler through the traffic? Can't do anything yet. Keep an eye on that green Porsche to see how he gets through the back markers before Verbenforth get up with him. And there, look to the outside line, goes the Stracker Mercedes gaining a place, but almost running out of road against the Lexus as they dive into the first chicane. There, look, you've got another back marker getting in the way of Roman Dumas, who's got Marco Mappelli in the back of him. Amaro Engels Mercedes comes up to challenge as well. This is for third place. Mappelli on a move yes, to the outside. Mappelli thinking about the outside, wisely chose not to because it was a closing gap yet again, but goes the long way around into the Clever Grande. But the problem that Porsche has is, as we've talked about with the Renault Racing, they don't have the straight line performance, and the Aston Martin will be quick in a straight line. That'll be a problem to get past. On board the Lamborghini out of the second chicane. Power down. Look at the Lesmos now. Yeah, it's got, well, it's got slightly better traction. 
Porsche going defensive. But, and uh, round the outside goes the Mercedes. Mauro Engel tries to buy into this as well in fifth place, trying to become fourth, trying to become third. Mapelli up the inside line. That's going to work shortly this time around, but Mauro Engel looking good. Mapelli gave the curb a big whack there, but he's gone through oh, and the Porsche gets Porsche's all sideways. Tagging the Mercedes, almost tagged the Black Falcon Mercedes as it tried to get up the outside. And that was all very messy and all very tense. As there, looks to the outside line, goes Felipe Fraga, tries to get around the outside. Is he going to slither off the road? No, he saves it. This is Dumas for you. Yeah, but Dumas might try to come back up the inside going into Desmo 1. Gets up alongside Fraga. Fraga took a big, big punt. And uh, he, he got into the corner, got through it, but he lost all momentum on the exit. But Ooh. side by side through Desmo 1. Fraga not going to give it up easily. Fabian Bartes there in the Lexus being elbowed out of the way. The back marker being given a real work over here by the leading cars. Uh, the Bentley and Maxime Sule in the mix as well there. The two real racing Porsche side by side. And the idea going round the outside in the middle of the Ascari. Uh, Dumas having a nightmare here. I mean, that car's just got no pace whatsoever. If this is down to tyres, they need to change them. Uh, but Romain Dumas is, well, just losing place after place. And all the good work of Sven Müller's middle stint is coming to nothing now, sadly. And there, look, to the inside of the Rover Porsche, up the kerb and all, goes number 76, Marvin Kirchhofer. He now goes ahead of number 99, Dennis Olsen. Wow, Michael Meadows. Is he going to puncture? Up. He's got a puncture He's got well. a left rear as well. Tank, Tank slapper. Big, big, big drama for Michael Meadows. You saw the tyre go. Big sideways moment. So suddenly now, what's called... Uh, uh, oh. Also, oh, that left is rears. the WRT Audi, left rear again. But left rears are the predominant tyre around this racetrack. It's a right-hand corner circuit. Is it just that the wet weather tyres are now being pushed beyond what is their reasonable limit? Michael Meadows comes back. You can see the magnesium sparks coming off the wheel. That looks more like suspension than a tyre to me. So, there's your leader, and look where the second-place Porsche is. Much closer. The gap we had at five seconds is now down to three and a half. So and Klaus Backler is catching him. Half a second a lap on the last lap alone. Yeah, there's, there's a sorry tail. In the garage, that's all over. So watch Felipe Fraga as he tries to line up the lead Silver Cup. Mercedes the number six. So Mauro... Uh, Why yeah, he goes? Yes. Where he goes. Yeah, but he's done it. It's just a good... I mean, he is a... Fraga is one of these Brazilian who races Brazilian stock cars, which is rough and ready motor racing. So another new, or was it that case, looks like it's a used wet weather tyre going on to, is that one of the Astons? The race leader has got a puncture, and Christopher Hasser has slowed, he's got a problem, there he is. So Christopher Hasser loses the race lead, and Klaus Backler will go ahead of him, and now we'll see what that is going to cost for Santa Log Audi in overall terms, because he's in danger of losing probably everything within the top 12 before he even gets to the pit lane. Christopher Hasser, the race leader, has a left rear puncture. It's yet another one that's gone pop. There goes 108 past him. That's Maxim Sule. So Hasser is down in seventh as he limps on. Again, that's a left rear. I mean, there's so many cars that we've seen with a left rear problem. Christopher Hasser is in at Santelot, whose race looked great after the clever pit stop. Now have big disappointment. And there is uh, Klaus Backler. He's now the race leader. It's a dry-ish circuit, and you've got them on wet. So basically, they're probably just overheating now. Yeah, That's I mean, why you're seeing them go to try and cool them down. Now, there is the dynamic motorsport squad. Nervous faces. Another good effort being put in lower down from Chris Froggart, because he is leading in Pro-Am, number 93 Ferrari. As one more lap, there will be time for, for the leading car of Klaus Backler, as this, again, stunning size of different shapes and sizes of GT3 car comes towards us. Now, Mauro Engel is under attack for his third place. Uh, behind him is the Silver Cup leader, Felipe Fraga, but the Acker car all over the back of the Black Falcon entry now as they come through the Parabolica. And can Felipe Fraga not only get a pro... Uh, sorry, a Silver Cup win, but third place overall? Through they come, onto the last lap of the race. The two Mercedes are together. They go past the pits now. Mauro Engel covers the inside line. Felipe Fraga behind him as they come into the braking area. The green Mercedes next is that of Gabriele Piana. And Maxim Sule in the Bentley is in sixth place. So this is quite a tight little battle pack for the last podium place. And is this going to be a maiden victory for the Dynamic Motorsport team? It's an Italian squad with a German car. But just like in the very first uh, rock pound race we had at Monza, it's going to be a Porsche win because there's a corner to go. And so up towards the chequered flag, this car started by Andrea Rizzoli, middle stint by Zayn Ashkenani, brought home by Klaus Backler. 
Checker flag is at the ready, and the Dynamic Motorsport Porsche will win the first Blancpain GT Series race of 2019. A win at Monza for Klaus Backler, for Zayed Ashkenani, and Andrea Rizzoli. Dynamic Motorsport wins in the Blancpain GT Series Endurance Cup race one from the Norwich One FFF Racing Team Lamborghini. Marco Mappelli, Dennis Lynn, and Andrea Caldarelli. And then third will go the way of Mauro Engel. Lucas Stoltz and Yelma Berman, fourth and a silver cup win to Felipe Fraga, Nico Bastian and Timo Bogoslavski. And there is utter delight, no, jubilation at Dynamic Motorsport. What a surprise and what a result. We will be able to hear from our winning drivers in a moment because Rossi is down there and a delighted Klaus Backler, who's uh, always been a very handy Porsche peddler, is embraced by Andrea Rizzoli and there is Zayd Ashkenani. Uh, genuinely, it's a result I don't think anybody expected. I think John's going to get his elbows out. Round the ball up, John. It's all yours. Jane, what can you say? Did you ever, ever dream you'd be on the podium here at Monza? Oh, it's actually, it's really incredible. Uh, incredible feeling. I'm absolutely happy. Can't hear you. Yeah, I'm absolutely happy. Everything did a brilliant job. Everything went smooth. So I'm absolutely happy, I think. Yeah, just incredible. Incredible. Come on. Can you explain, can you explain why you have won the three hours at Monza? I don't know, <laughs> really it was amazing. I mean, the dream was so big, I would never thought it was Wait, possible. Your car looks like it's straight out of the showroom. I, I, I love that car, I love that car. I mean, it's due to the fantastic job of my teammates. It's incredible, really. Close, close. Klaus, come here. Congratulations, congratulations. Have you any words that can sum up your feelings for winning here today? Uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, I'm so happy and proud of the, the whole team, about my teammates. We, we had good testing, um, but for sure, you know, when you come to this grid, uh, it's not so, so easy. I was really impressed uh, when I came here. It was also my first uh, weekend in Brompo Endurance. And uh, when you see um, all the good drivers, all the good teams, and now we are in the end of the weekend, we are the winning team. It's unbelievable. I'm so happy. Klaus, can you explain how this team has come together and just wins first time out in GT3? Uh, I mean, as I said, uh, at the moment I don't have really words. Uh, we, we, we worked so hard uh, through the last uh, weeks and also through the weekend. And uh, we knew that we can do well, but uh, for sure everything has to come together. And uh, now everything come together and we are there. So, uh, Welcome to the Porsche family, you know well. Yeah, thank you very much. So the podium is being readied for these drivers. The results of round one of the Blancpain GT Series, and it's won by the dynamic motorsport Porsche of the Austrian driver Klaus Backler, Italian Andrea Rizzoli and Zayed Ashkenani. Second, Andrea Caldarelli, Marco Mappelli and Dennis Lind from Yama Boerman, Luca Stoltz and Mauro Engel. Nico Bastian, a class winning fourth with Timo Bogoslavski and Felipe Fraga, ahead of Hubert Haupt, Patrick Assenheimer and Gabriele Piana. Sixth, the Bentley, the quicker of the two, Alec Bunker, Mandy Suchet, Maxim Sule. Clement Schmidt, Nick Foster and Kelvin van der Linde taking seventh ahead of Dennis Olsen, Dirk Werner and Matt Campbell. In, in the end, the better of the two Rover Porsches. Kurt Redegaard ninth with Andrew Watson and Johnny Adam ahead of Michele Barretta, Taylor Proto and Diego Menchaca in another of the FFF racing team Lamborghinis. Uh, you take the results of course and that's your championship, it's the first round. So overall, Andrea Rizzoli, Zayed Ashkanani and Klaus Backler are the leaders from Marco Mappelli, Dennis Lindt and Andrea Caldarelli. Marco Engel, Lucas Stoltz and Yelma Berman third and although they are Silver Cup winners, they're fourth in the overall standings. Felipe Fraga, Timo Bogoslavski and Nico Bastian. Well done to Klaus Backler, to Andrea Rizzoli and to Zayed Ashkenani. And the trophies are brought forward to Luca Stoltz, to Yelma Berman, to Mauro Engel. If you heard the interview that Mauro gave to John Watson, you can tell he wrote in Australia for a few years, can't you? His accents change remarkably. Uh, but, uh, they take third for Black Falcon in second spot. Then we have Marco Bapelli, Andrea Caldarelli, and Dennis Lind. And it's a Porsche team on the top step of the podium at Monza. Klaus Backler, Zayed Ashkenani, Andrea Rizzoli win the first Blancpain GT Series race of 2019.